The Dallas Stars season came to an end last night in a disappointing loss, really a heartbreaking loss, to the St. Louis Blues in Game 7 on the road last night. Now, I talked the other day about the Game 6 in Dallas on Sunday and the controversial goal that I kept warning may have well turned the tide in the series because Dallas was in a closeout game. They had a 3-2 lead in the series, and they were in a closeout game at home, and they had the opportunity. They were down 2-1 in that game, had a heartbreaking miss where they just failed to capitalize on a golden opportunity, and within a couple minutes of that, they then have the injury to Bishop where he goes down like he shot, takes a collar a shot to the collarbone with a, off a slap shot, and I think that was uh, Petrenko who hit that, but the result is the Blues pull away from the Stars in that game, and in the blink of an eye, within about a 33-second span, you get two goals uh, from the end of one goal to the next one, and suddenly it's 4-1, and I warned at the time that, you know, th- this could be the thing that turns the series, and unfortunately, I think that was the case. The Blues, whether they just had a little more depth or a little bit better coaching, these teams were incredibly even matched. If you ask me on paper right now who the better team is for the series, I would agree with you. I think it's the St. Louis Blues, and that's the result we got. But the Stars could have had this one, man, and it sucks. In Game 7, they go back to St. Louis. Both teams get goals in the first period. St. Louis gets theirs at the six minute, uh, six minutes left in the first period. It's a 14 minute mark of the game. The stars get one a couple minutes later on really just a very fortuitous bounce that set them up to get one in on Bennington. So at the end of one, we're tied at one all and good God almighty. The only reason the stars were in this game and had every opportunity to win it, including, uh, a just painful. So close. That should have been it moment in double overtime for Jamie Ben. Um, ben Bishop was a machine in this game. Ben Bishop in game sevens in his career, both came from the 2015 playoff series when he was with the LA Kings. And in that case, uh, he pitched a shutout in those games. He had not allowed a single goal and even had a couple assists. And that was the Ben Bishop we said we needed. We needed him to bounce back from the last game uh, from giving up three or four goals, really, in that game. And that's that's what we got. Ben Bishop, man, after the Blues got that goal 14 minutes into the game, he shut down. He locked down. And even though in the second and third periods, especially the second period, the Stars got like one shot on goal compared to like 24 for the Blues. And then in the third period, it was largely the same. I didn't feel like the Stars started to find traction until the first overtime period. And that's when you started seeing the opportunities finally there, and they just could not capitalize on it. And, you know, Bishop in the game, he he makes several incredible saves. I mean, he's out there, and he's basically got his, he's basically Thanos with an infinity gauntlet, (laughs) and he is just shutting down everything. Game, I, I don't know if I would call it the game of his career to this point, but I mean, he he had people around the hockey world raving about his performance last night. He stops ultimately 52 of 54 shots. Uh, So 52 of 54 saves, basically. Uh, They finally get one late, uh, about the midpoint of the second overtime. And even then, it's just a fortuitous bounce for the Blues. And there's just no one there to help Bishop. He's it, It just happens. It sucks that it goes that way but that's just the way it goes the difference was in this game the blues were the more aggressive team not only did they control the second and third period but even when the stars got going in overtime in the second overtime it really felt like they were still like all it did it's not like the stars surged ahead we were like oh the stars are controlling this now it really was still pretty even at that point so it went from feeling like just a one-sided bloodbath essentially to being like an open game, anyone has the opportunity here. And the Stars had their chances. Uh, They possessed the puck. They had more, uh, I believe the term is danger opportunities than the Blues. But if you look at it, the Blues had something like 90 shots in the game compared to like 27 for the Stars total. That's not shots on goal. That's just them shooting in general. Like it's not a save for Bishop, but it's still 
hit in the direction of the goal. So when you're when you're nearly getting tripled in that category, you're screwed. Like you're not gonna win. The aggressor wins. The Blues felt like the more physical team. They felt like the more desperate team. I don't know if the Stars were just running low on energy or what, but it seemed like the Blues a lot until really the overtime period. It felt like they had fresh bodies out there the whole time. And when the Stars, every time you start to think that they could take some control, it just didn't happen. The Blues countered it, and they had their opportunities in overtime. Here's one thing that frustrates me. Other than the controversy of that goal from Game 6 that put it to 3-1 and really kind of turned the tide of the series, I felt like this was a poorly officiated series in general. A lot both ways, but the Blues didn't get a single penalty in the final six periods of the series. Now, again, they were the more physical, more aggressive team. And so that, in its own right, is confusing. And there were times on the MSNBC, not MSNBC, NBCSN, there you go, wrong character letters there, uh, where the broadcasters would even say, wow, the Blues got away with one there. 52 seconds left in the third period. Stars had a brilliant opportunity on a wraparound, had uh, Zuccarello right there for a possible chime-in. Uh, chime in chip in and he gets blown up he gets blown up by a blues player high stick right under you know high collarbone kind of neck area and the broadcasters even say wow the blues got away with one there that should have been a power play with 52 seconds left in the third period opportunity was there and a tie game you never know so instead they get away with that they get away with then another shot where a stars player on a breakaway gets his legs kind of cut out from under him. He ends up flying into Bennington, the goalie for the Blues, and their home crowd reacts wanting a call against, I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Radulov who got knocked into him, and they wanted a call against Radulov for flying into the goalie like that. Well, it's like, dude, he only went into the goalie because he got his, you know, taken out basically by the Blues player in the first place. He's not sliding on his back and ass because he wants to. He's not trying to go skates first at the goalie just for the hell of it. So... It's a nasty wipe out there. Uh, Bennington is fine. Game presses on. No penalty or anything assessed. Basically, it looked like the referees, especially when this game got to OT, they just didn't want to call penalties at all. The Blues got two penalties, two uh, power play opportunities in this game. The Stars shut down both of them. It's a shame that the Stars season came to an end because I really felt like if they could have gotten out of this series, that they would have become the new favorite for the Stanley Cup. I feel like this was the best two teams left at this point. And with Ben Bishop and the way he's played this postseason, he's been phenomenal. He's a uh, Vesna finalist, and he's he's got an opportunity at winning it. He was brilliant in this game. And if he had gotten any real support from his teammates, I feel like there was a lot of opportunity there to capitalize. And, you know, speaking of the Stars, the bright future for them, I feel like this isn't just a fluke season that is just really good and they're going to, you know, who knows what happens next year. I do feel like they're building on something. The big thing is, in addition to having Jamie Benn, who I think is about 30 now, and you have Sagan, who I want to say is like 27. In addition to still having them locked up for multiple years, you have the 19-year-old Miro Heskinen, who I think will become a fantastic player, and that's a bright feature for them. But they also have uh, Rope Hintz, uh, who was really a stud this postseason for the Stars. And, you know, I mentioned earlier as far as the Stars, how good they were defensively this year. It's not just net minding and all of that. They were a very good team this year. And, I mean, like, defensively. And in this postseason, I think they only allowed two power play goals on, like, 30 attempts in the postseason. Uh, maybe the, Maybe it's not 30, but I know they only gave up two goals and they had the best... Uh, power play percentage defensively speaking in the playoffs so it's a shame man all of it was there the defense was there the goaltending was there you have the talent on your team what I would argue the stars didn't quite have in this case Uh, I don't think they quite have the depth and I don't think they quite have maybe you could say the star power only in the sense that I think hence as great as he was this year uh, he, he had a fantastic uh postseason for a rookie he's 22 years old i believe Uh, as i said earlier miro is 19 you give those guys a little bit more time to develop i think the stars could be really building something they got bishop for another like four years i want to say i mean he's he's locked up they don't have to worry about him and he's 32 years old so he's not over the hill or anything in in terms of a goaltender either so 
they've got the pieces, and I think they do have a good coach with Montgomery. I think there's a real opportunity for them to do something. And do I think they could have done it this year? If they had escaped this series, I think they would have become the favorite. And certainly they're capable. But I expressed earlier I have some questions about their overall depth. Um, about their overall depth. And because of that, I think that that was going to exhaust them a little bit more. And I think they would have been hard-pressed to keep moving forward. Now... Uh, Spezza, I think they're going to probably, I think he's going to be free after this year. So they're going to be probably moving on from him and that'll open up some cap space. The important thing is that they have the foundation in place where now it's like, okay, you got your two main guys here uh, and Sagan and Ben, and then you have these two rookie studs to pair and you've got the goaltender. You've got a bunch of these pieces. Now you kind of have a sense and an idea of who you are because in the 2016 postseason. You know, they had the incredible offense, but they had no defense and no goaltending. And so they were still largely trying to figure out who they were and what the balance was. Well, now they have the framework in place. And now it's like the discussion is, okay, what do we add around this now that we have the foundation? Now that we have something solid and secure, let's build on it instead of having to try and change out pieces of the foundation as we go. And then you have different coaches come in, you know, they bring back Hitchcock for a little bit. And, you know, the identity of the team is just in flux and... Now you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, there you go. You know, we, we're we not caught where we're going from the Lindy Ruff offensive juggernaut to the Hitchcock very down and dirty defensive minded thing. Now there's a little bit more of a balance with Montgomery. And I think that, I think there's a lot of promise there. I would say for this postseason, uh, if I wanted to be a little bit critical of the stars, there were a ton of opportunities there for them to capitalize. And I understand you're not going to get all of them. But I do think that Jamie Ben, maybe he's nursing some kind of injury. I felt like he really underperformed this postseason. It didn't feel like he was making a whole lot of impact when he was out there. He had the chippiness and he had, in terms of body language and mentality and attitude, I felt like the leadership was there. I felt like on the on the ice, he didn't make much of an impact. Obviously, he had the goal that could have closed it out in double OT, and that would have changed the perception a little bit, but it's still a situation where, you know, it's so close. I would have liked a review on the play, although I think the puck didn't cross the line. Uh, puck has to completely cross the line for it to be a goal. Bennington's leg looked to be uh, flat against, like, just behind the line. Certainly, probably not enough for the puck to have crossed it, but if uh, Ben looked like he was trying to go five hole in that case, uh, and it just didn't work out. If he had gone inside corner, I think he would have got it on the wraparound to close out the series and the game for the Stars. And then I would have felt differently about him not coming through. But it felt like he turned the puck over a lot this postseason. Like he wasn't winning a lot of physical scrums for the puck along the boards. And in faceoffs, I felt like he was a little bit uh, underwhelming as well. And Sagan, you know, he, he scored a couple goals this postseason. I felt like he had flashes where you saw him, but for these two guys and how much the stars are on the books for them, especially Sagan, you know, he just got in the last year that new deal, or maybe it was last year I'm thinking of, a little over a year ago, whatever. Um, it's it's disappointing when you have those two guys, those are supposed to be your lead dogs, and I felt like they weren't the kind of difference makers in this postseason that you needed. I felt like a lot of it, yeah, I know that because of who they are, they're going to draw more attention, but... I felt like they were for large stretches of this postseason, particularly in this series, that they were outplayed. Sagan had a couple goals, he made a couple things happen, but you know, usually when you got one of those guys out there and they're on the attack, you should feel good about the situation. And by the end of the series, you kind of were back to a more neutral feeling of like, you know, whether it was Sagan on a breakaway or it was someone else, you kind of just felt like all right, let's just see if they can do it. Whereas before, well, what you should probably feel is like, oh, we got our best player on a breakaway here. And that's just not how it worked out. So uh, not to be too critical. Again, I think it was a, no matter what, the season was a success for the Stars. It's a bitter pill to swallow now to lose when you're this close. Because again, I honestly feel like this was probably one of the two or three best teams left in the postseason. The Stars and Blues being two of those, and then maybe one other um, I feel like they were in that discussion and they were good enough to get to the Stanley Cup finals, I believe. 
and it just didn't didn't pan out that way. Sometimes you draw a bad matchup, you know, the Stars being the wild card. Uh, it kind of is what it is. So let's see what they can do in the offseason. They get to keep their top-end draft pick now uh, because they got eliminated here. That's a slight silver lining, even though a lot of people aren't going to want to look at that right now. Uh, they get to keep their top draft pick. And, you know, maybe now that they've made a little noise, let's see if they can draw in some free agents. And let's see what the team can do moving forward. Hopefully they're able to continue forward and not kind of have a shifting, evolving, uh, foundational correction identity crisis like they did after the 2016 Game 7 loss. I believe it was still Game 7 loss to the Blues. So the Blues are the drag and they got a slay. We'll have to see if they can do it. They've been nipped in the bud twice by them now in a three-year span. And we have to see if they can get over that hump, if they can close it out and catch them next year but I, i'm i'm hopeful for the foundation of the team i'm hopeful for the future and I'll, I'll say this on the plus side i might have been more on the fence still about the stars and a little bit more at the time probably fair weather but i think i'm all in now i really do i i, I watched this entire postseason run for the stars about you know 13 games or whatever and yeah, uh, that was captivating. So I, I can't wait to see the team build and try and move forward going ahead.